Hey guys, it's George. Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be rating and reviewing the Mama 2021 red carpet fashion. Again, a lot of all black, some hits, some misses. We're just going to get stuck in. If you are new to my channel or new to this style of video, hello, welcome. I've got all of the red carpet looks here on my laptop. We're going to go through, talk silhouettes, cuts, fabrics, concepts how cohesive it is, etc. And then as it is a review, I'll be rating each look out of 10. And where everyone's pretty much in all black, let's go with out of 10 black hearts. And as I previously mentioned, if this is an individual, they'll be individually rated. And if it is a group, they'll be rated as a collective. You know the drill, you know by now. <laughs> Just a little bit about my fashion background before we get into it. I studied fashion design at university where I specialized in menswear. And then I went on to work in the fashion industry for four years where I worked with affordable brands, contemporary designers, and British heritage brands. Let's get stuck into Esper. First up, Esper. Starting off with Esper, I'm assuming that they're in Givenchy. They are Givenchy global brand ambassadors after all. And what's really interesting about this set of looks is straight away there are elements of each member's looks that really relate back to the Asia Artist Awards. When we look at Giselle, the shape of her jacket and the fabrics of it are very similar to the coat that Winter was wearing. It's got that sheer panel and then the panel of opaque and she's got the embellishment. It's a very similar silhouette the wide shoulders, the snatched waist, and then the A-line. And then if we skip to Karina, we can see that her dress is very similar to Ning Ning's, and it has that pleated asymmetric hem detail in the sheer fabric. If anything, I think Karina's is a bit too similar, but she looks beautiful in it. It fits her perfectly, and I do like the juxtaposition between the solid fabric and that sheer pleated detail on the hem. And then when we look at Ning Ning, she's got that leather look shirt and then the leather skirt with that flash of red. And I am not surprised if this is the, actually the shirt that Giselle wore at the Asia Artist Awards because it's got that same cutout detail on the chest. And then it looks like Ning Ning's wearing a very similar pair of tights and those chunky, super, super high boots. The only one for me that is different is Winter's. She's got this very chic blazer dress on, the way it wraps, the way it fastens with that hardware detail. And again, it's giving her this really beautiful silhouette of the wide shoulders coming in and then flaring back out at the hips. And this set of looks are just so cohesive. Esper's stylist knows how to style them as a collective. And I feel that's something that other group stylists struggle with. If you're presenting yourself as a group, you should look collective as a group. It shouldn't look like each and every other member has been styled individually and then just put in a lineup, it doesn't work. What I love about this set of looks is how I feel like they've reinvented their looks from the Asia Artist Awards and they're serving it up in a different way. We've still got the same concept, the strong, all black, great silhouettes, different textures, hardware, embellishment, but it's just been presented completely differently. And I think when you have such a strong set of looks, it's very easy to represent them in a different way. And that's what I'm getting from this set of looks. I don't understand why there was controversy and drama about their Asia Artist Award looks. I thought they were the best looks from the night. And I think these looks here are possibly the best female looks at the Mummers. I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. So I'm gonna give Esper nine black hearts just purely because I slightly preferred their Asia Artist Award looks, but as I said, possibly the best female looks from the mummers. Moving on to Inhypen. Inhypen are just fucking rocking my world with these red carpet looks. And what I really appreciate is the fact that what, this is the third award show in what, like a 10 day period. And each and every single red carpet they've been on, they've served us up a completely different vibe. At the Asia Artist Awards, we had the oversized suits with the varsity elements. And then at the Melon Music Awards, we had that really beautiful, chic, black and white moment that was giving us a school uniform vibes. And now at the Mummers, they're giving us this really slick, black and white moment. They've given us that boxy silhouette of the slim cut trousers that we usually see groups like Stray Kids and 80s in. And it just looks so fucking good on them. And I'm really loving the flashes of that pink metallic fabric. It just really stands out. And when you look at the styling of it, they really balance themselves perfectly because we've got 
three members with the pink and the rest of them have got the ties and the chains over the ties. So the styling is really balanced. And again, it's a very cohesive look as a group. They're presenting so strong as a group at every single red carpet. I just honestly think this silhouette is so flattering. We see so many male idols, as I just said, stray kids, 80s come straight to mind, wearing this kind of silhouette the wide boxy blazer, the slim cut trousers, and then the chunky shoe. The chunky shoe just really grounds the look where the jackets are so boxy. If this was like a slim Chelsea boot or like a pointed kind of shoe, a very like standard derby dress shoe, it would just look out of proportion. But, oh. and to me, it kind of looks like they're wearing the same loafer, but we've got the all black version and then the black and white version. I love the black and white version. It's just like, fucking perfection. One of my favorites has to be He Sung. I love the boxy double-breasted jacket and the way that it wraps over, it really emphasizes this wide shoulder shape and then coming down to the narrow trouser and then the flash of that pink metallic vest worn over the top of the black shirt and the black tie. There are lots of classic menswear elements in here, but it's just been styled in a very cool contemporary way. And then that really narrow, slim crop trouser with the chunky shoe, it's just such a sick silhouette. My other favorite would have to be, I believe it's on Nikki. he's second in from the right. I just really love how extreme this crop jacket's been taken. It's probably the most cropped in the lineup. I believe it's single breasted and it's been styled with the white shirt and the black tie. So this look is all about the silhouette. But what I love the most is how he's got that chain worn over the top of the tie and it just stands out so beautifully over the black. And I just think it's a really cool way to wear a chain and a tie. It looks so, so sick. And like the black hair, the statement earrings, like everything about this set of looks is just mwah to me. And Hypen is 10 black hearts. They are killing it. I can't wait to see more red carpet fashion from them. Next up, we have 80s. And the first thing I noticed about watching them on the red carpet is why does San have his hand over his mouth the entire time? I don't understand. It was very distracting and I was just like, I wanna know what he's hiding. So if any of you know, please let me know in the comments. I'm like, does he have a zit? Like, I don't know. Like I have a zit on my fucking face right now or right above my lip and I'm not like, it draws more attention to it. So that was confusing. What is great about this set of looks for 80s is the fact that it's so cohesive and I feel like male groups tend to present more cohesive than female groups. I don't know why that is. Maybe that's because I'm biased because I studied and worked in menswear. Who does? Who the fuck? knows. There are members who I feel like have been given more attention with their styling and other members not so much. I don't know whether that's more of a personal preference or how they prefer to be dressed, but for me, Wu Yang, Song Hua, you know, best dressed out of this group because it's just like the accessories and the cuts and the way they've been styled, it makes them stand out for me. Wu Yang is serving up the three-piece suit with that beautiful crop jacket with the wide shawl lapel. He's got that Prada bolero tie. I feel like this is a trending item. We've seen this Prada bolero tie cropping up on the red carpet quite a lot. And I can see why it just immediately takes it there. It makes it look more contemporary, more stylized, more with the times. Wu Young is serving it up for me. The Prada bolero tie, the cut, the statement earrings. It's just giving me that little bit extra. Songhua, Songhua's just serving it up. The double-breasted velvet jacket worn shirtless with that really slim black tie, just very simply folded underneath. It's incredibly chic. And then the slim trouser with that boot, it just really enhances his silhouette, like the height, like how lean he is. It's just perfection on him. And then I really like Yun Ho's because it's a very modern take on a tail jacket. A tail jacket is extremely classic menswear tailoring. You see it a lot when people get married or like go to Ascot, which if you don't know what Ascot is, it's like a bougie like race, horse racing thing here in the UK. But this is boxy. We've got the wide shoulders. You can see that it doesn't come straight into his waist. It comes down 
and it just gives this really sick boxy shape. This is incredibly temporary way to wear a tail jacket. And then I like the fact that he's got the slim cut trousers on and then he's got that chunky shoe. Everything else about the outfit is very traditional. The wingtip collar shirt, the bow tie, but it's the cut of the jacket and the styling of the shoe. It just makes it that contemporary edge and a reinvention of a classic. And you guys know I love that shit. Looking at Yo Sang's up close as well, I do like this. The only thing you guys know I'm gonna talk about, if you watched my EXO red carpet video, you know what I'm gonna say. I do like his suit overall. The collar detail is super interesting, how he's got that very standard notch lapel, but then you can see that there's another lapel piece coming out, they've panelled it, and then he's got the cumber band on, which is that ribbon that sits at the bottom of your shirt above the trouser, so it really elongates his leg and gives a beautiful silhouette. The only thing I don't like is the wingtip collar shirt with the tie. For me, it does not work. It's just, it's not the type of shirt that's meant to be worn with a classic tie. And when we move on to Stray Kids down the line, they've done this type of styling as well, but it does look slightly better where the ties are fatter. But where this is a skinny tie with the wingtip collar, no, 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 no. Just give him a plain button up shirt, leave it bare, or give him the Prada Bolero tie. And this would have been like fucking sick. It's just that wingtip collar shirt pulls it down ever so slightly. Overall though, cohesive, some members have got more contemporary styling, some members have got more classic, it all comes down to personal preference. So I'm going to give AT's 8.5 wing wings? Girl, wrong video. I'm going to give AT's 8.5 black hearts. There are some elements that I love and there are a few elements that I would tweak. So I think that is a fair, fair score. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I might be in a bitch. I can't speak today, I'm hungover. I might be being a bitch. Here we have TXT and straight away, their styling is so much stronger than at the Melon Music Awards. If you saw that review, I said that their looks were incredibly chic, impeccably tailored, but they just needed an extra bit of styling to amp it up. And that is what they've done here. The only one I'm not so keen on is on Taeyang. And the only reason is because the rest of the color palette is so concise. The grays, the blacks, that denim. And then he's got this taupey leather number and it just really stands out against the rest of the color palette. I feel like if it was a black leather or if they just took it off where he's got the denim, the gray and the black, it would have looked a lot better. That's the only thing about this set of looks that I literally just want to pluck off and like dash and be like, you're good now, like you're good. But apart from that, I love it. I love the fact that we've got Subin and Hyunin Kai in the capes and they've done them in different fabrics so it gives them the point of difference each. I love the ruffled collar and they've all got the ruffled collar. The chains, it's giving us that like vampire -y vibe. I'm fucking here for it. This award show season, we've not seen a male idol or male idols because there's, you know, Hyunin Kai and Subin wearing the capes. I just think it's very unique and it works with these looks where they've got the denim cape on Hyunin Kai tying in to Taehyung's denim jacket. It just works. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I think Pom Gyu's look is incredibly chic, pretty much all black apart from that white ruffled collar. And then we've got the chains on the leather jacket, the statement knit. It just works. It's very, very sleek. My favorite is Jeonjin's. Surprise, shock surprise. Again, it's very sleek, very chic. The ruffled collar, the chain, the black crew neck knitwear tucked into the trousers, giving him that really great silhouette. If you watched my Yinjin mirror selfie review, you know I was going on about how he always has that tucked in silhouette. And then I love this coat, this double breasted six button peak lapel coat. Very classic menswear, but the fact that they've made the lapel that zebra fabric, it just amps it up, it gives it. And this is what I wanted from TXT at the Melon Music Awards, just that little bit, little bit extra. As I said then, they can serve a look and that's what they're doing here. So I'm gonna give TXT nine black hearts. It's just because of Taeyang's jacket. I wanna rip it off, throw it, and then I'll give you a 10. I think that's fair. Next up, we have Itzy and I'll be honest, when I first saw the picture of them on the red carpet, I was just like, oh, this is boring. Ah, oh, like what's happened? Because when we saw them at the Asia Artist Awards, obviously minus Yeji, 
they were serving up some really cool elements to their looks. But now seeing the actual video, it is more interesting. Overall, they are cohesive and we do have balance with the looks because we've got three members in the short skirts and then we've got two members in the trousers. So it does balance it out and it is cohesive. It's black, we've got hardware, we've got sequins, similar silhouettes. So it is a cohesive set of looks, but I definitely found the Asia Artist Awards looks just that bit more edgy and itsy art edgy. The pieces are nice, but I feel like, it, again, it just could have been amped up a bit more. Rujin's is my favorite because it's like this blazer dress that kind of has like this 80s flair to it. And I love that strong shoulder shape. And then you can see it's really coming in at the waist. And then it's got that slight A-line shape. So it's really pulling her in and then flaring back out. And we can see it's got that beautiful border detail with the hardware and then the buttons going down the front. And I like the fact that they've bought the waist it up to that empire line just underneath the bust because again it's really enhancing the shape of her waist and then yuna's look i feel like yuna's is like the toned down version of what she wore at the asia artist awards what i do like about the dress though is the cutout detail at the bust and like it's not it's not too much it's just a nice little flash of flesh and then she's got like the feathers around the cuffs and then she's got that studded shoe boot which really works with the look but apart from that it's just boring like the way that they were styled at the asia artist awards it was edgy it had like an edge to it while still being quite chic and they all look great but they just it just needs a bit more edgy are itsy they're a cool group they usually have sick styling but their red carpet looks just need to be dialed up a bit more so for that reason i'm gonna give itsy a 7.5 wings Cohesive, all black, really sick elements, but I want more. I want more. Moving on to Stray Kids. This is the epitome of Stray Kids style. Again, their styling is just so strong every time. And even though I feel like their red carpet looks are more chic and subdued than their performance looks, they go all out with their performance looks. When you look at their red carpet looks, there are definitely elements that are always that Stray Kids staple style. It's what I rate about Stray Kids. It's incredibly cohesive, not just this look as a collective, but they're always cohesive when it comes to performance looks, music video looks. It's their stylist slaps, they know what they're doing. And when you think of their performance looks, there's loads of obvious branding. It's very in your face. Whereas when you look at the red carpet looks, it's more refined. You've got elements of that look at us, we're in Prada, we're in Dior, bitch. Elements of that, but it's refined. You've got the brooches, you've got the ties, you've got the pins. It's just these little elements that nod back to that style. And then when it comes to the silhouettes, again, cropped, boxy, slim, belted waists. Four things that I love. So I love this set of looks. I do feel like I prefer these looks to their Asia Artist Award looks just ever so slightly because I feel like these photograph better and you can see all of the details better where there is more of a balance of white throughout the looks. I honestly can't pick favorites from this set of look because each and every one just has such a different detail to it. And a video actually popped up on my homepage the other day called K-pop Fashion Sucks. And in that video, um, the girl was like, oh, men's K-pop fashion is just so boring. And I literally was like, I feel like I'm gonna like have a heart attack. Like, no. But as I said, I feel like I'm biased because I studied menswear, I worked in menswear and the devil was in the detail. And that's what you see here. If you don't know anything about menswear, you're not interested in men's fashion, you might look at these looks and be like, oh, it's, it's a black suit. And that's fair enough. But when you look at Lino, he's got this beautiful notch lapel blazer on and the center front, which is where the jacket does up, it's just ever so slightly asymmetric. He's got the YSL brooch, the belted waist, just really enhancing that shape. And then you look at Han next to him and he's got that incredibly cropped, almost bolero like jacket, the same kind of waistcoat silhouette underneath, the slim cut trousers, the Christian Dior pin, the piles around the necks. It's, it might be a black blazer, but it's the details, the silhouette, 
the cuts and that's what menswear is all about and that's why I lose my mind over. <laughs> You can see Sung Min has a very similar silhouette on to Han, the cropped jacket, the slim cut trousers. He's also got the Christian Dior pin detail and then on the tie as well, but his has been styled with the shirt and tie. So it's that point of difference. You can see that Felix has a very similar look on the cropped jacket with the slim cut trousers, but again, his has been styled ever so slightly different. We can see that he's got the Prada logo on the chest pocket of the cropped jacket. He's got the Prada tie on the shirt that's been worn slightly open with the black roll neck. And then obviously, you know, I'm going to talk about Bang Chan, oversized jacket, worn shirtless, belted at the waist, little pearl necklace. What's not to love? In my Asia Artist Award video, I gave Stray Kids nine black hearts and it's only right I give them 10 black hearts here. You just saw what I was talking about. Perfect set of looks and I just love Stray Kids styling and how it's always the epitome of Stray Kids. Next up, we've got NCT and what I love about these looks is how the stylist, the designer who's made these looks, they've really focused on different silhouettes and different cuts. When you look at the elements of suiting and tailoring, all of these looks are incredibly classic and they present incredibly cohesive as a group, but where there's 23 members in NCT on the red carpet, I mean, I feel like Taehyung is missing, unless I'm being blind, but they do start to get a bit samey. But then on the flip side of that, I can't imagine how hard it is to dress 23 guys in black and white suits and have them look completely different. But the way that they've done it isn't necessarily through the styling. The way that they've done that is through the cuts and the silhouettes. No one has the same silhouette. Every single suit on every single member of NCT has been cut to a proportion that suits their body. No one looks out of proportion. Every single person looks incredibly slick and like the body proportion on them is perfect. So the stylist and design have done an impeccable job on that. And then you can see there's such a mixture of lapels. We've got notch, we've got peak, we've got different shawl lapels. Some members have a velvet collar panel and then a normal lapel. And then other members have got double breasted jackets, some six button, some four button. And every single member has been styled with the white pocket square, very classic. Every single member's got the white shirt with either a black tie or a black bow tie. The only thing that I'm like, and you know, you know, and you know I'm gonna say it, is the wingtip collar shirts with the ties. For me, it just doesn't work. Granted, the ties work better here than what we've seen previously from ATs at this red carpet and from EXO in previous years, but it's just where the ties are so skinny. Here the ties are more fat and they've got that ruched knot, so it just looks less out of proportion and more in balance. It looks better, but I still don't like it. I still, for me, it's just not what you put with a wingtip collar shirt, but that's just my opinion. When I think of NCT in their performance looks, in their stage looks, they do lean more streetwear, more urban, and this is incredibly classic. Would I have liked to have seen some of those elements in their red carpet looks? Yes, would have been sick, but then it's also nice to see them present so classically, so sleek, and then I just, I can't even understand how much I appreciate that everyone has a different cut, a different lapel, and it fits everyone perfectly. That is a lot of work. So for that reason, I'm gonna give NCT nine black hearts. As I said earlier, if you're not necessarily into menswear, then you will probably look at this and be like, oh my God, it's boring. But when you know the amount of work that like goes into dressing 23 people and making every single thing fit them perfectly, it has to be appreciated. Next up, we have Brave Girls. And if you've watched my previous red carpet review videos, you'll know I have a qualms when it comes to the Brave Girls styling and it's, it's, no, it's no different here. What I like starting with the pros is that they are presenting very cohesively and usually they're in matchy matchy outfits. So here it's nice to see a level of uniqueness to each member's look. I feel like when we look at the lineup of them in their standing order, we're starting off strong and it just kind of like goes downhill slightly. The leather strapless dress on Yunji, you can see all of the beautiful detail on the corset and then the way it skims over her hips and then flares out, it gives her beautiful shape and the leather just looks very like soft 
and luxurious. And then I believe next to her is Yu Jong, and she's got this black blazer dress on of the pearl button detail. It's very sleek, it's very classic, the strong shoulder shape, she looks good in it. But then the next two looks, I just, I don't. They're not bad, but they're just not great. Moving on to Min Young, I just don't feel like this is necessarily flattering on her. I feel like the placement of the giant bejeweled crucifixes as straps is not flattering. Where you've got the straight neckline and then you've got the giant crucifixes is making the distance between the neckline and her shoulders very, very short. And it just gives a slight odd proportion. And then where you've got the statement crucifixes as the strap, that's where your eye immediately goes and it's just too much. And I don't understand the giant crucifixes because there's no other like symbolic element in anyone else's look or anything that's like overly embellished. So for me, it just doesn't make sense. And then moving on to Yuna, I can appreciate where they're going with this look. I do like the idea of like the full PVC and, you know, it's giving me like Matrix vibes and I appreciate that they're trying new things and trying to go in this kind of like edgier direction, especially when you think a few award shows back that were wearing the same matching skater dress. And for me, that's just not the vibe. So I can appreciate what the stylist is trying to do and like what direction they're trying to go in. But for me, having like the brooch right at the neck, which kind of looks like a sheriff's badge, and then it's just not photographing that well. Like the top path looks a bit like crumpled. I think when you're wearing something that's very high shine, you have to be kind of like conscious of like how it's gonna photograph all of the flashes going off. And if it's like something that's not fitted and has a bit more volume to it, it's gonna look a bit strange. And I feel like that's just an example of it here. So I feel like it kind of like starts well and then the styling just starts kind of like teeter off a bit. So for that reason, I'm gonna give Brave Girls six black hearts. Right, let's finish on the members of Girls' Generation who attended the Mummers. Let's start with Soo Young. What I like about this look, first of all, is that she's wearing color. We've not had any color on the red carpet and I feel like when we are reviewing these K-pop events. It is majority black and white. If anyone knows the reason why for that, please let me know in the comments. But what I like is the fact that we've got red and she is kind of emulating the color of the carpet, the black background, the red carpet, but I think it works because it just photographs well. It works well with the background. And I like the fact that we've got these metallic leather pants and then we've got the sheer top with the black bra underneath. It's just like a little bit sexy, a little bit edgy. And then you can see as well, she's got this very sharp structured blazer on that has the zip detail. And where it's been unzipped, we're getting the flashes of the red sheer fabric underneath. I really love how this is styled. And then she's got that very simple black strap sandal. and. It just gives her a really nice height. The fact that the zips on the trousers have been undone, she get the flash of the shoe, but it's not overbearing. I think this has been styled really well and I think she looks beautiful. And I just love the fact that it's different to what everyone else has done. So I'm gonna give her 10 black hearts. So young, 10 black hearts for you. I'm a fan of this. And then moving on to Tiffany. Again, I'm a fan of this look. I like the fact that both of the girls' generation members that attended were literally like, let's do something different, let's switch up, let's give them like this like edgy, like cheeky kind of vibe. But they're showing some skin. Just the right amount of skin as well. I think this lace dress is absolutely beautiful. And I like the fact that it is long sleeved. It's high neck, it's to the floor. So it's cheeky in the sense it's giving us this like kind of like nude-ish illusion. But then you can see that she's got the black high-waisted panty underneath. Do I think a high-waisted panty is the best? No, but I think that's my like Western kind of like, you know. We have people that wear a nude illusion dress with a G-string on the red carpet. So, you know, I think it's that mentality where I think actually if she did do that it would take it away from this like classiness and it would like bring it down a notch and that's what she's serving she's serving like class but like with a bit of edge do you know I'm gonna give Tiffany eight black hearts I do really like this look but Sue Young's just top notch 
I think I'm gonna have to say Espa are my best dressed female group from the mummers and my best dressed male group has to be Stray Kids. Both just such sick looks. They did it for me. They rocked Matt World. <laughs> Please let me know in the comments what you think of the looks from the Mama Red Carpet and let me know who is your best dressed. What you should do next is go check out my previous video, my November recap video, where I react to Hwasa I'm a Bee, Ever Go Pirate, Stray Kids Christmas Evil and 80s Turbulence. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a card here as well as a link in the description box. But thank you so much for watching. A massive, massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed. You are amazing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.